to the Juventus team come for the European Cup. That is sure tonight. What is sure tonight is it won't be remembered as Juventus' Cup, even though it's the first time they've won it. It'll be remembered as the night on which football madness, still flickering in the ground, scored one of its most distasteful triumphs. The politicians, the administrators are saying it must not, it will not happen again. But the rabble who flock to see their heroes, if they are their heroes, must be sorted out and never allowed into a football ground again. And that's all been said before. The players, I gather, wanted to play the game. There must also have been a very strong judgment to be made by the authorities of what might have happened if they'd called it off. If those thousands of people, taught with emotion, had been unleashed onto the streets of Brussels. But now there is some release of a kind. But when will there be the effective answers to what has happened tonight? There's almost a no-go area on that terrace on a scene these so-called fans taunting and jibing and throwing bricks at the riot police of Brussels and they haven't been taken on. The striped shirts of Juventus are those in your picture. The Italian champions, the European Cup has avoided them until tonight. Lots of things avoided them until tonight. And there's no sign of the red shirts of Liverpool. I gather even if they'd gone home with the European Cup, there was very severe doubt whether the traditional ride round Liverpool of returning heroes would have gone ahead. But that's all conjecture now. A lap of honour before the trophy is accepted. A lap of honour before the fans who just a couple of hours ago have been standing watching the dead carried away under tarpaulins and national flags of Italy. So the questions again will be asked, were there any winners tonight? There'll be few who believe the game can survive if there are no effective answers soon to what's been seen. Tomorrow the inquest will begin here in Britain in the offices of the administrators of the game in Europe. The blame will start to be apportioned, the solutions aired. Already there's conjecture that we may have seen the last British presence in Europe for a number of years if a tough line is taken, if, if it, the British element in the crowd is seen to be guilty if the finger points at them. The fires are lit. Not a uniform in sight. They're beginning to drift out into the streets of Brussels. And it doesn't take much ingenuity to imagine that outside the security precautions that will be necessary will be unprecedented in the history of the European game. We will be returning to Brussels at the end of the... It's now known that British and Italians were among the 35 people killed tonight at the European Cup final in Brussels. It's believed Liverpool fans tried to invade terraces occupied by Juventus supporters. Those who died were trampled to death after terracing collapsed in the stampede to escape the trouble. Police reinforcements were called in to help Red Cross and doctors tend the injured. Mrs Thatcher has just said 
those responsible have brought shame and disgrace to their country and to football. That's the end of this newsflash. Cup final, where at least 35 people died in rioting tonight, finally started an hour and a half late after more rioting. The deaths occurred shortly before the kickoff when Liverpool fans, it said, invaded terraces occupied by Juventus supporters. Those who died were trampled to death after terracing collapsed in the stampede to escape the trouble. Police said both British and Italian fans are among the dead. The number of inju injured is still not known. Some reports put it in hundreds. The game was held up for some time when fans continued to fight with each other and with riot police. The Liverpool captain, Phil Neal, spoke to the crowd to try and calm them down. There'll be a full report on news at 10. That's the end of this ITN News Flash. Ask your insurance advisor. Acting before tonight's European Cup final in Brussels. It's believed to have started when Liverpool fans attacked Juventus supporters in the panic that followed, a wall collapsed and many people were crushed to death. It took Belgian police an hour and a half to restore order. The reaction of the Italian fans said it all. Even after the riots, Liverpool supporters made it clear they had no intention of giving up. The violence continued with even more ferocious attacks on the police. At one point, it looked like the riot was getting beyond the control of the police. Fireworks and smoke bombs were being thrown without discrimination, and it seemed as though the trouble would never end. One fan started to argue with the police and was then hit on the head with a brick thrown by other supporters. He was then set upon by the police. Dazed supporters inside the ground were apparently unaware that people had been killed. Over an hour after the disaster, fans were still fighting with the police. Against such a violent backdrop, the match itself was predictably a tense and subdued affair. How much the players have been told of the tragedy isn't clear, but the action at times reflected the shock mood in the stadium. Liverpool's Lawrence lasted just three minutes when an old shoulder injury returned. He left for the dressing room, no doubt relieved to be out of the fray. The Juventus' defensive tactics were as ever uncompromising. Paul Walsh's run ended by a heavy tour. But as a sterile first half went on, Liverpool began to show a few touches of their former European glory. Walsh's snapshot well saved by Tachoni. Juventus were relying on the breakaway, but only once did it get Cabrini a clear shot, Grobola's athletic dive keeping it out. Liverpool, though, were creating most of the chances, but failing to convert them. Wolf broke the offside trap to be met by a very good save. Half-time saw an uneasy peace between the fans, but 11 minutes into the second half, Juventus finally broke the stalemate on the... Gillespie cynically brought down Boniek in full flight. It was well outside the area, but such was the mood of the local players, they hardly complained about the penalty. The Frenchman Platini put it away with ease, and Liverpool's hold on the European Cup was finally loosened. The sports minister, Mr Neil McFarlane, has said tonight that he's called for a rigorous inquiry into the incident. He said he had feared problems might occur in advance. I telegrammed the uh, director of uh, Europe, the European Football Association last week, and I also wrote to my office in numbers uh, a fortnight or so ago, both in Holland and in Belgium, in preparation for these two uh, finals. Uh, and I asked them to ensure that the preparation for this match had rigorously followed that European code. And as we've had problems before, and as I feared there might be a surfeit of, uh, of uh, black market tickets, 
That's why I telegram, because I believe that if all those ground rules and recommendations are implemented, then I think you can eliminate some of these problems. But quite clearly, what we now have to do is to establish the facts, and I shall have those throughout the day and the night. Do you think it's possible that British teams might now be banned from European competition? I think we've been facing that problem for a number of years, and that's why I went to Europe in January 1983 and asked all the ministers for the 23 member nations of the Council of Europe to consider deeply exactly what was a European problem. It isn't solely an English problem or a British problem. It is a European problem, and violence has occurred in Italy, it's occurred in Holland, it's occurred in West Germany and France and Spain and many other countries of the world. It is not solely an English problem, but I do believe that the European Football Association have got to look very closely at the, all the details leading up to this particular match. Merseyside police said tonight that anyone wishing to know about friends or relatives injured in Brussels should phone them on 051 709 6010. That's 051 709 6010. And the Labour leader of Liverpool City Council, Mr. Derek Hatton, said tonight he was calling off a civic reception planned for the Liverpool team tomorrow. Well, obviously, I think after, as a result of what's happened tonight, there is no way that the people of Liverpool would want us to actually be celebrating anything. That certainly the, the team would have to be welcomed back as they played a very good game of football. Um, and certainly there's something, there's, uh, even though there's nothing to celebrate as far as the uh, not winning the match, there's certainly nothing to celebrate as far as all those lives that have been what? lost and concerned. And there's no way we as a city council will be part and parcel of any sort of celebrations tomorrow. Do you blame Liverpool fans for the scenes that we've seen this evening? Nobody, nobody could condone what happened tonight. Nobody could uh, justify the actions of certain individuals. But I believe it was a small minority. I believe the vast majority of Liverpool supporters were on the terraces and sitting in the seats just as appalled by what was going on as we were sitting at home. And I think one of the unfortunate things is that what really was a tragedy tonight was treated by many people as just violence, uh, violence on the terraces. And certainly I think we have to ask the question why it took so long for ambulances to get there, why it took so long for medical attention, and why people were left lying around there. And also, incidentally, why, why people who were, who were actually dying. And the other great tragedy tonight, today, seven Britons, three of them children, died when their coach, taking them on a school adventure holiday, crashed in the south of France. That's all from us for the moment. Goodbye. After the Thames News headlines, the final part of our film, The Scarlet and the Black.